I'm Greg Acosta, and today we're going to talk about how to check the volume of your cylinder head's combustion chambers. The volume of your combustion chambers is a really important spec in your overall engine build. Uh, it directly correlates to your compression ratio. Uh, too big a chamber and you lose compression to small a chamber and maybe you have too much compression. If you purchase your heads brand new, the manufacturer will tell you exactly what size those chambers are. But if you purchase them secondhand or you've had work done to them, or even if they're just factory junkyard heads and you're unsure of the provenance, measuring your combustion chamber volume is a critical step in knowing what your overall compression ratio is going to be. Now, because the combustion chamber's shape is pretty irregular and can't be measured with, you know, a set of calipers or a ruler, uh, we have to measure it by some other means. That means is by a known volume of fluid filling the chamber. In order to accurately measure the volume of your combustion chambers, you're gonna need a few tools, all of which are included in the Goodson kit. We have a 100cc lab grade borosilicate glass burette. We have a full metal uh, burette mounting stand. We have an acrylic sealing plate in order to seal off the chamber and a fill port in order to be able to add fluid into the sealed chamber. We have a funnel that will make it nice and easy to fill the narrow mouth of the burette. And then a nice little touch is this burette cleaning brush because we will use dyed fluid in order to increase visibility in the burette. There's really nothing left to do but to go measure some chambers. Let's go. So the Goodson checking liquid actually comes with only a little bit in there because it's a concentrate so that it saves money on shipping, which is actually a genius idea. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and unseal it, which I'm not very good at. Put that in there and we're gonna grab distilled water. Uh, you can use water, you can use alcohol, you can use anything you want, but a gallon of isopropyl alcohol would be pretty expensive and we have hard water and I really don't want that in the burette. So we're just gonna fill it up. The instructions show to fill it up to a little above the shoulder of the jug. I honestly thought this might be a little more exciting. <laughs> it's a tiny <laughs> little funnel. I think this is literally watching paint dry. All right. So now the next step is to, I don't know if you're supposed to shake it up or not, but I'm gonna. Uh, and now the next step is to go prepare the sealing plate and get it on the cylinder head. All right, now this acrylic plate has a, protect, a protective cover on it that we've got to scrape off. Let's see, if you were wondering how we were gonna see through the brown thing, it's not actually brown, it's clear. This is to keep it from getting damaged and shipping. And I'm not doing a very good job of peeling this. I don't know if you can see that, but this hole here is actually tapered to help get the nozzle in there. And you'll see why that's important in a minute. All right, so the next thing we have to do is we're gonna have to apply some grease to the deck of the cylinder head to seal the plate. And for that, I'm just using regular old Valvoline, whatever, Sin Power grease. And the trick here is you want to make sure there's enough to seal, but not so much that it lifts the plate high. And I'm not doing a very good job, but this will make sense in a minute. All right, now that we have that, we take the plate, again, with the, the wider part towards us, we find a high spot and see how it's smushing out. Hoping that's sealed enough. 
All right, and then we have to seal the cylinder head. Obviously, there's a giant spark plug hole. So you want to screw a spark plug in to seal it, a proper spark plug, but one that you don't plan on using anymore because this will ruin the spark plug. All right, the next step is to fill the burette. And I'm gonna cheat a little bit, and I'm gonna use a 100 milliliter beaker so that I'm starting with a good amount instead of trying to pour a whole gallon at once. Uh, because we're gonna need to pour it over 100 milliliters and then bleed it to exactly 100 milliliters. Now before you put anything in here, I almost messed this up. Make sure your pet cock is closed. Now we just need to line everything up with the hole in our acrylic plate. We want the least amount of fall because we do not want to introduce bubbles. All right, so now that we're all set up, it's just a matter of opening it and watching. Now, if these are not new heads, like these are, this would be a place where you could find a leaky valve. Uh, in this case, the intake would be leaking out uh, if you had any intake valve leaks. Uh, but then you also watch these areas to make sure your uh, grease seal is doing okay. All right, those last little bits can be difficult, especially on a kidney-shaped chamber like these. We've got a couple air bubbles in there. But I'm gonna try to shake out without losing anything. There we go. And I'm gonna shim. All right, at this point, I'm adding it just mil drop by drop. Oh, we're almost so close. All right, there it is. I don't know if you caught that bubble, but so we are completely full. We had minimal leakage. And that's what a full chamber looks like. Now, we look up and we, at the, we find the meniscus. If it'll focus. And we see 53 cc's. All right, as we can see on the label of the trick flow heads, these are supposed to be 53 cc chambers. All right, so with that, we know the exact uh, volume of our combustion chambers in our new heads, which there was never any doubt, they're brand new heads, but trust but verify. Uh, and all we have to do now is pull the spark plug, let all that green stuff drain everywhere, clean it up, and then we can go bolt the cylinder heads on. So thanks for watching. I'm Greg Acosta. Stay tuned for more from Engine Labs.